Growing up in a low-income family can educate you how to continually struggle to keep your head above water while also concerned about avoiding going bankrupt. It makes them aware of the many times you feel abandoned by people you consider family. The hungry evenings, damaged family relationships, and the various mental disorders that comes with refusing to give up. The good news is that if you start doing things differently, things will change. When you enter the middle class, there is no official benchmark, but you'll notice signals like owning a home, a car, paying for your child's college tuition, and yet having money left over. Many of us who have struggled may complain that it isn't enough, but we should be grateful for the beginnings. Now, before you get too down on yourself, let me show you how to get from the bottom to the middle class. Number 1. Believing in your capacity to achieve Let me introduce you to Joseph. Joseph used to see his father get up in the morning with a grimace on his face because of the prior nighttime conflicts he had with his mother. Then, he'd cover it by smiling at him. Later, Joseph would overhear his mother complaining on the phone about how difficult life is and how tired she is of their way of life. But they would continue to tell Joseph that everything is okay. From afar, Joseph could get a sense of what life is like in the trenches. His attitude, behavior, actions, and way of life all grew out of the basic belief that this is how life is intended to be. Little did he know that everything he was told was a lie. And as he grew older, he realized that what he thought was important if he wanted to be the man he wanted to be after reading a quote from Darren Hardy that said, The key to becoming world-class in your endeavors is to build your performance around world-class routines. Joseph's routines changed dramatically once he changed his life values. He got up every morning, thumped his chest, and reminded himself, I'm great, and I can do it. Joseph isn't sure where he began to believe it, but he did recently. Believing in oneself is the first step in moving up from the low-income class, and it is only then that you will be able to climb into the middle class. Number 2. The Persons With Whom You Associate Nobody will ever tell you how much successful people despise complainers, pessimists, negative people, and those with a lousy attitude. It's not that they don't have defects of their own, but doing it frequently feeds off the energy of others around you. That's why they'll shun you and seek out folks with similar energy levels. These bad characteristics disproportionately affect the lower class, which is why many people would want to avoid them. However, this may be remedied by teaching yourself to think positively and, as a result, changing your friends. Because your friends say a lot about your conduct, you should be prepared to abandon pals who continually moan and complain and start hanging out with people who have a clear perspective on life. You'll want to be like your new pals if you make new friends who think about how they'll convert every challenge into an opportunity. New opportunities and relationships spring up as a result of the desire. If this isn't enough to convince you to meet some new positive pals, recall what Aditya Mehta said. The mediocre have a very limited view of reality and, as a result, their life. They view things as they are, rather than as they might be. Number 3. Make friends that encourage you to improve There's this girl I'm in love with, and she's technically in a better financial position than I am. Aside from the fact that she was stunning, I like the way she thought. I may be sitting there, telling her how stuck I am, and she will come up with a solution that she believes will help me get out of it. Even if I don't always agree with what she says, I often consider where I'd be if she never questioned my thinking. Because I'll always want to give her something greater than her brilliant idea whenever she comes up with one. So, one time, we decided to challenge each other to see who could earn the most money by the end of the month. And, I'm not gonna lie, it was her idea. Let's get this money, she said in that tone. That, I suppose, is what is assisting my development. With your pals, it's the same way. Having a group of positive-thinking pals isn't enough to get you into the middle class. You'll need pals who despise financial stability or stagnation and relish the discomfort of change. When you're continually bickering over how much more they've earned, you know you've got such friends. Number 4. Concentrating on your profession I'll never forget the thrill I felt the first time I caught a basketball. It felt incredible because, despite the fact that I had no idea what I was doing, I was pretty much the best in our crew. 
Later, when I discovered my uncle with a photo of my father while he was on the junior basketball team, my desire to participate in the sport grew even stronger. When I told him I played occasionally, he surprised me by saying, Don't think you'll be as good as me, son. I didn't bother sticking up for what I wanted at the time, because I come from a culture where top-notch surrender is expected. I gave it up till I was in high school and yet managed to do well. I know this isn't the most inspiring message, but the idea is that if you focus on what you think you're good at, no one can tell you otherwise. The more you practice, the more perfect you will become, and sooner rather than later, you will be among the best. Every talent you learn, according to Scott Adams, doubles your chances of success. Rather than giving up on your ability at the first sign of disappointment and moving on to something else, concentrate on what you believe in. With time, you'll gain the necessary exposure and earn your keep. And before you know it, you'll be rolling in the streets with the upper crust. We have more tips for you on this list, but tell us, what motivates you to be successful? Is it your family, your loved ones, or even yourself? Let us know in the comments below. Number 5. Your standards determine the quality of your existence. Let's go back to Joseph. He had to put up with a lot of disrespect as a result of growing up in a low-income family, which he thought he deserved because it was part of life. Despite his mother's assurances that he was a gorgeous and lovely little boy, all he saw in the mirror was a lost child who no one would ever adore. He was so engrossed in his emotions that he didn't realize how, as he grew older, more of what his mother has stated began to emerge. It all started with proving everyone who sneered at him incorrect. He refused to let anyone mistreat him and he became more assertive. If I'm being honest, some memories from my childhood continue to haunt me. But I've learned the hard way that allowing your circumstances to control your life will lead to your demise. Act like a middle class person if you want to get into the middle class. Even if things aren't going your way at first, you must keep your head up. Owning a home, getting health insurance, or sending your children to college are all terrific places to start. Nobody said it will be simple, but if you want people to respect your name, you must quit putting up with mediocrity. Number 7. Look for work One of the best ways to know if someone will make it out of the trenches is to see if they are putting in any effort, and there is no better way to accomplish that than to obtain a job. Many persons in the lower class have experienced a great deal of rejection when looking for work just because of their educational levels, leading them to despair. What they don't realize is that everyone is subjected to rejection. In fact, most people who live a wealthy lifestyle go through so many that they lose track. Getting a job is the first step towards becoming middle class. You can start saving for a retirement fund, a house, a medical fund, your children's college funds, or a vacation with that work. You don't have to do all of these tasks at once. Simply go at your own rate and gradually increase your speed. I don't believe there is any other way for you to enter the middle class, save winning the jackpot. So instead of getting up and joining gangs to complain about how unhappy your lives are, you might think large and pursue your dreams. Besides, if you consider that there is still an upper class, climbing to the middle class isn't a difficult task. Number 7. Pay attention to how you use your time. When I walk through the neighborhood where I grew up, it still amazes me how calm everyone is, regardless of how they spend their time. I once assumed people were simply content with their lives, but I was given the exact opposite response. In reality, many are resentful of their situation, but they have no idea how to change or get out of it. But it's all about how you use your time. Nothing comes from wasting time doing nothing but the understanding that time flies. Instead of squandering time while you're in a difficult situation, you may put it to good use by doing something productive. Because time is the one thing you can't get back. While many people are fortunate enough to be born into the middle class, others must fight their way up, which is understandable. There's nothing wrong with desiring more than you have. In fact, after you achieve your goals, you will serve as an example to others. If you don't want the same results as before, follow the simple steps I've outlined to go from the lower to the middle class. If you truly have the desire, hunger, and attention, your journey will take you beyond the middle class and into the top 1%. 
That's it for today's video. If you like it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and turn on all notifications. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Until next time, 